everyone's high tier, no one is. That's pretty much right. just a high mid tier. For and at the same me. time, ask me. The problem yeah. is, I mean, Taco, think about think about what Snake's main game plan is, and then think about what option Ness has to counteract all of that, dude. Uh, Psy Magnet is an amazing option in this matchup. It pretty much invalidates every B button that Snake has. Right, and but I mean, my 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 counteraction to that, I guess, that can make things into a, uh, quite the interesting match nonetheless, is just the fact that I know Seabass, and I know Seabass is playing this game for a hot minute. So no doubt that Seabass has some sort of a game plan against a, what could potentially be a quite the hard matchup like you mentioned, and I agree. It can be very hard, but we'll have to see what Seabass has in store to counteract that, because uh, no doubt the dude has experience and most likely has a game plan against it as well. Again, we're, we're sick and tired of seeing Nessus go up against Sorties, uh, you know, and, and, and the Aegis, of course, but now we're starting to see a matchup that's pretty much akin to that in, in, in Ness versus Snake. Now, Snake is a heavy guy. He gets comboed pretty easily. He's, he's not the smallest character, so he has a very large hitbox. And on top of that, his main game plan just doesn't work on Ness. So, I, I gotta admit, this is probably a minus two plus for um, for Seabass. And he's got a mountain to climb, especially playing as a character and a player as good as Ultios. Yeah, that's definitely worth taking into account. You can already see Ultios trying to go for the PK Thunder up air follow to try and close out the stock, but at 158, and air dodge is just what Seabass needs to keep him on this first stock. But there you go. That B reverse with the grenade and get caught out by a dash tag, even getting a little bit of that side magnet for a bit of recovery. And at only 43%, Ultios is taking the first stock of the set. I'm saying Seal for Seabass is. Oh my god! Oh my goodness, and taking the Weak. second stock, and not retaining a smidge of damage. You see what I'm talking about? I mean, Ness can just kind of do that to Snake. Snake doesn't get sent very far by their combos, and uh, if you get a read on them, they, they, they don't want to press any buttons because they don't want to get comboed more. Right. Sorry, you're just you're out of the stock at 39%. That was, that was like a two attack combo uh, that he killed. What he Look at this pressure so, on the ledge as well. But yeah, no, you're definitely not right. Because again, Mortar does nothing compared to Ness. That's gonna just right. magnet and uh, survive that, but the one bomb that actually connects doesn't doesn't true combo into that forward air, and you know Seabass needs to use these I guess close quarters options as, as their main tool now against Ness, and it's not going so well. Yeah, no, it's going a little bit rough so far. Still retaining three stocks at 151 percent, and though he might be on the ropes for this first stock, is definitely far from having really too much on the line for this first game right now. We are on the cusp of the three stock. Nice F smash, but it will be shielded. The F tilt won't kill yet. Excuse me, the key yeah, is going yet. out, but there's that oh. air dodge. Yeah, and look at that good DI to keep Seabass, or I'm sorry, to keep Ophios on this first stock, but there we go. Down throw on the up tilt. That's going to be one heck of a confirm to take out the first stock, but, you know, it might be a little bit, it might be too little too late for the first game. Ophios might need to reconsider things for this uh, second match. Or, I'm sorry, Seabass might need to reconsider things for this uh, upcoming match. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's trying to camp with grenades right now, but really, you can't do that against Ness because all Ness needs to do to complete and validate the approach is just hold Magnet on the other side of the stage, and there's very little Seabass could do to counteract that. Right, yeah, no, I definitely agree there. Uh, that's definitely made itself clear here, but there we go. Back there coming out from Oki is going to launch Seabass to the other side of the screen to close out game number one. In a JV3 fashion, too. Yeah, no less. I'm honestly very proud of CPS for being able to take a stock there. It ain't easy. Especially after the momentum shift, uh, after they lost their first stock with the uh, back end of forward air into down air. The, the, the combo for uh, the kill. Right. No, yeah, that, that was pretty interesting to watch uh, go down there, but it looks like we're going to get one second look at that same matchup here. Going back to PS2. We're going to have to see if CMAS maybe has an uh, uh, alternative to his approach this time around. And, uh, see, the, the, another thing. The, you know, the main gimmick of Snake's game plan, people are like, oh, it's, it's only explosions. Not so. It's explosions to help him get out of these combos. Right. Um, you know, and he trades a lot because he's heavy. He can do that. Um, but again, you're trading with a character who can heal themselves. That is super difficult to deal with. Yeah, that is like a tremendously tall order there, and uh, CMS is struggling to fill that order in right now at 137% and only 33% sustained now with that down tilt. 
Um, and it looks like Sebus has quite the ways to go just to close out this first stock alone. Ogios wasting no time in these swaggy PSI magnets in order to lead right into that throw to take the first stock of the uh, second game. It's been a grueling minute of competition, and Okios has only sustained about 44%. Uh, but 59%, hey, this, this close quarter damage is starting to add up a little bit for Seabass. He's starting to realize that grenades maybe aren't the option, and he needs to pick his buttons a little bit better. The problem right. is, Snake needs to condition you to get you hit by those. And right. again, with, without the tool of grenades, it's just really difficult. Yeah, it's definitely not going to come easily here. You can tell that even though this is a pretty considerably uh, tied game right now, Okios is definitely playing it in a fashion, switching things up just enough to where that momentum that Seabass has definitely gained since the last game is going to be completely gr grinded to a halt with that ugly connecting man. Quite the connection there in that P uh, PK Thunder uh, coming out from Okios. That, that's yeah. going to be a make or break right now for Seabass as to whether or not he can tie this up in the next Okay, that angle. you know what? Yeah, you know what criteria met? We got a pretty damn even second game. Look at that. I disagree, because if you look at the stock count, it's 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 quite in Okios' favor, honestly. Well, um, I mean, it, it looks like some of his uh, momentum is retained here. You can see that he's going for a lot of these setups, but at the same time, yeah, you know, like the stock count makes you think that, but... You know, especially like when he's just kind of controlling this platform right now and punishing Okios for... You, you see how he's going for these PK Thunders and now he's just starting to completely call him out for it. And it definitely seems like Seabass is in control, but not necessarily in the lead. Again, I'm going to disagree with you there, Moe, because he's losing a lot of these interactions. He's got 82% onto Okios right now, so he did a decent job of getting that damage up right now, but he's still losing the percentage war and the stock war. Right, look at this pressure here with down smashing. Yeah, you can see that percent definitely starting to climb here, you're right. So we'll see how he holds and against Okios, who's trying to catch him on these landings. He's going to be responding with the C4 to cover his landings as well. Very good strategy there. But at the same time, Okios is probably not going to let that slide for too much longer here. Yeah, he's utilizing very good movement, uh, a lot of B-reverses to, to help him land um, with these grenades as well. But again, whoa! Okay. I think, I think he was mid-heal, so he... Uh, Pretty much got hit around 100, I think. Um, that's how that works. And you know, Seabass is starting to come back a little bit. I think Okios is kind of pushing for these back airs or, or for any kill option. When you get desperate like that, it's very easy to find your lead completely taken away from you. Um, right. And I think Seabass is starting to bait out the Mangus a little bit. Yeah, it does look like he's starting to bait them out and punish them quite a bit. Uh, for sure, playing the long game uh, right now in the second game. And I think that's probably the wiser option here. Yeah, you know, he's playing very shifty uh, at, at the latter end of this match. Right, definitely needed if you're alive at 140%. When you got a dash tech option like that to close out the 2-0 win for Ophios in the winner's quarterfinals, we'll be proceeding on to face off against Stroder Ame here.